Hello, welcome to another video of the platforming tool. This video, we're going to make digital assets from our setup here. So if you follow along, you have a setup like this. So we create the wooden planks and also a border system. So in here, we just want to wrap this up in like one single tool. So usually I would just uh, select everything, except in this case, we're only going to select it uh, until here because we still want to have like a custom input. Then we can either go here, say, make, uh, make digital asset from selection. Or we can just click on create sub network, then it will be one node. And then we can right click and say that we want to create a digital asset of this. Then we can call this, for example, like tutorial platform. And then we create it here our digital assets. So in here we're gonna go to parameters and we're gonna create some parameters. So let's now go back into a network. So right now we have our tool. Uh, we can remove this name it's just called the toyo platform so we can still uh plug in custom shapes here like you, like you can see here like we can still plug in custom shapes uh, and the logic is working like expected so what are some settings that we want to uh, tweak so if you look at the planks for example uh, we had here the style option so in this case i only have like two different styles um so we're gonna go here and we're going to drag here this uh, switch option and we can just call this for example styles and we can also make a menu out of this so we can here go to menu enable menu and we can say that by default uh, zero will be for example like the base look or base planks then uh, when the value is one we will have for example those uh, planks being like broken up into uh, those spaces so let's call this for example divided uh, and then you can for example now build in uh, more uh, more different styles so that can be quite interesting if you want to build something with a lot of different things that you build more styles so in game engine you can always choose what you wanted to see what will also be interesting here for the planks is to also have a, a uv control so we did our basic UVing over here, but we might want to at the top, at the bottom here, uh, still do a transform of the UV. So UV transform. And I'm mainly interested in actually just the scale. So I'm just going to grab the scale and we can just say UV uh, scale. Then when we click apply, uh, we will now have this green parts and now we can expand this a bit more and we can copy this part here and paste this into the other scaling so they will all have the same value so one 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 so if this value would be two they will all then be two to two uh, we probably want to set a range for this so maybe it can go from 0.2 to for example five so we have like a lot of range to scale the uvs and we also probably want to then actually also build some folder structure for this so these are for example two uh, parameters for the planks. So I'm going to create a new folder. This is, for example, for the planks. And we can select our parameters and just write them into planks. We can also then make another folder, which is then, for example, for uh, the border. And then we're going to drag in some values there. So here we now have the border. We're going to go here to our logic of the border. And I mainly want to here go in this part and as we built this, we also named the setting size. So that's quite useful now. So I can come back here and I can just drag this size length. So we can just keep it actually as length. Um, so you can define this name better, but I think length uh, is a good value, is a good name in here. Uh, maybe the slider can even go higher. So from maybe like it goes from 0.5 to all the way to 10 in case we really want to like scale up these parts a lot and what can also be useful is actually here we have the scaling then as well and we can actually play around with that so in our vex code we actually want to add one single line or we could do it of course in other different ways so i want to have a, another scaling value that i can control here in my menu so i'm going to say here again add this scale value uh, multiply this by a other vector and we're going to say that we want to have build a custom vector so i'm going to type in channel v which is create a channel for a vector and we can just give this for example the name like a scalar value uh, and we can close this off 
So by default, it will not do anything. And that's because we also now have to press this button. So it will now actually create uh, this value over here in this menu. So I can now fill this in one, one, one. So we will multiply the scale by this value. And now I can just now grab these values. So either we can grab the full vector or we can grab them separately. Uh, so for example, here I can um, grab the width here. So this was uh, scale uh, X, or we can just call the width, for example. And we can also grab this one, which is then scale uh, for uh, the height. So we're going to press apply. And now these values are linked. So you can also have like the third one if you want to. Uh, but I mainly want to have custom controls over the width and the height to like tweak those a bit better uh, in the game. And that's about it for like the base settings that I definitely need in my menu. Uh, of course, again, you can build more settings. But for now, we can leave it like this. Let's go back here and see how things are working out. So you can see that already my result is not really what I wanted. So I noticed again that I need to place a output node. So don't forget to place those. So this is always the output of the tool. And let's go back. So now I have an option to uh, change styles. So we have like the base planks and then we have like the divided planks. So we can also now have the UV scale. So I can quickly scale this up or down based on, of course, the textures that you have from, for example, mega scans or something like that. Then you can just quickly scale this up or down. Then we have the borders. So I can now, if I enable the wireframe, I can play around here uh, with like the spacing. So you can see that they will automatically also now fit. And we can also now here uh, scale this and I probably want to go higher than one as well, more so we can open the menu again. And we want to then here go from, let's say 0.5 to three, for example, and here as well. So 0 0.5, 0 0.5 to three. What we can also do is we can uh, make the menus uh, or the folders into simple folders and they will make a difference. So they are now actually more, so they're now like stacked on top of each other. So since the menus are not that large, uh, we can just stack them here. So again, I can encourage you to build more parameters. Like I said, like you can build more parameters, for example, for different styles. Like if you really want to have like a tool that plays around with like the wooden plank style, or maybe you want to, for example, add features to uh, have like uh, bl broken planks, for example, or planks that are like sticking out. And you can, for example, also scatter around like plank models to like have more variation there. Uh, you can also have like, again, more things with the border. Like you can also now do like a fencing system. You have all the information there and it's just about deciding what do I want for my tool and what do I don't want for this tool. So, and that was it for this video. So we wrapped this up into like one single simple tool. Uh, like I said, we can just now plug in custom shapes. Uh, we can play with different shapes. We can here, we can just plug in multiple different planks. So if you're interested, thank you for watching.